Yeah, praise the Lord, brethren. Thank you for staying tuned. Uh, we're just going to have a little discussion of the Word of God. And uh, hopefully, definitely, uh, as the Lord has given us grace to, to learn new things when we go into His Word. And it is the Word that builds us up. It's the Word that has cleansed us. The, 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 the Word of God tells us that we have received the washing of water by the Word. And the Lord Jesus mentioned this quite emphatically, he says, by saying that um, when he was praying back to the Father in John chapter 17, he said they had cleansed by the word I've spoken to them. He said to the Father that, reproaching the Father that, what you have, you have given me, I've given unto them. And uh, we were introduced to the Father by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that introduction resulted in us receiving eternal life. Because it meant that we had believed in the Son whom the Father had sent. And so when we go into the word, we are discovering more and more of the promises that the Lord had, uh, has, has, has uh, you know, stored up for us. Amen? That's Amen. why we are going, we have to go into the Word. That's where everything that we've been given and promised, you know, we can find in, in details in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So we'll have a, a short uh, exhortation on, on the ways of the Lord. Amen? The Lord tells us his ways are past finding. And his ways are not our ways. And so that means that we need to forsake our ways and find what he has planned for us. Because that's where success is. That's where victory is. That's where we'll realize you know, the joy that we need to, to enjoy and the pleasure we need to, to enjoy all the time. Because what he has to offer comes out of his very life. And that life is eternal life. And for us to really... You know, experience the material evidence of those promises. We need to follow Him, Amen. And Amen. In, in walking in His ways is one way or the only way, because the Lord Jesus tells us, that "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Me." He is the way. There is no other way. And we have found that way to the Father, but we need to discover you know, the wisdom the Lord has, uh, the Father has made available to us through Christ Jesus. The Spirit of the Father, the Mighty Spirit Himself, leads us. We are born of Him. They that are led by the Spirit, the Spirit are the sons of God. So we are in these sons of God, in joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we must always ensure that we are following the footsteps of our our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the who is our our pace setter, who is our first fruit, our firstborn, and He only did one thing following the way that was set before him according to the will of the Father. He did not deviate from it. He stayed true and honest to it. And that's what we must also do. Amen? Yeah. Father, we thank you for uh, the entrance of your word brings and gives light and amplifies our understanding and opens us up to even more of the promises and the, the, the details and the, the jewels that we ought to, to pick up and put to use to realize the material evidence of your promises in our lives. We give you thanks and praise that as we share your word that we shall receive from you indeed because you have in store what you intend for us to learn today about your promises, about your word. We give you thanks in concerning your ways which are perfect and which are just, which are right. Therefore, Father, we want to endeavor even as you have strengthened us with the Holy Spirit and empowered us, that we may stay true in the path you've laid before us, mm -hmm. in the race that you've placed before us, we should run with patience and be successful at the end and receive a crown or many crowns according to what you have given us to do and what you have planned to reward us with at the end. We give you praise and give you glory. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So we, we have three... Uh, scripture passages we're going to read, uh, but there are two of them are long passages. Okay? So the key scripture would be taken from the book of Hosea, chapter 14, and it's the last verse of chapter 14, that's chapter 9, the book of Hosea. Okay? Anybody can find it and read? Yes, Hosea, sir. chapter 14, verse 9. Who is the wise, and he shall understand these things, prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. 
But the transgressors shall fall therein. Amen. Amen. So I'll read that in the New International Version, uh, the NIV. It says in Hosea chapter 14, verse 9, Who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, the righteous walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. Yeah. That scripture is quite clear. That's why the Lord wants us to understand. So if we have the wisdom which has been made available to us, we should be able to understand these things. What are those things? Yeah. If you read the beginning of chapter 14, you'll come across some of those things that, the, 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 that are summarized in this line here in chapter in, in verse 9 because the Lord was reminding Israel regarding the covenant he had with them and the benefit of, the, of that covenant because Israel, Israel had gone wayward in the days of Prophet Hosea. That's the Lord asked Prophet Hosea to marry uh, a prostitute and have children by her and Name the children according to the plan that he had in mind to exemplify what was actually happening with Israel and how it's going to fulfill it's a, uh, the it's going to fulfill certain aspects of that plan within Israel because of their waywardness. But then he reminded them of his promises and his goodness according to the covenant he had with them. So in, in verse nine, he's telling them what one needs to do and what has been provided what provision has been made it said that the wise so that is the righteous the righteous ought to be wise and prudent so say, who is wise who is prudent who is wise let him understand these things the things that will make you fulfill the will of God the things that will make you address any uh, issues I need addressing because you are able to see what is going wrong you are able to, to, to see where change is required it could be in your behaviour in your attitude in your habit and who is prudent let him know them for the ways of the Lord are right the righteous walk in them so our existence as those who have been made righteous through Christ Jesus, our Lord, is to follow through in the ways of the Lord. The ways of the Lord are his precepts, his lines, his commandments, which are not burdensome, that we ought to respond to faithfully and gladly. Because that's our service. We perform our service to the Lord with gladness. Amen. His ways are right. That means there's nothing wrong with what the Lord has asked us to do. Although he has empowered us to do whatever task placed before us, according to his plan and purposes. But we are reminded that his, his ways are right. He taught his words to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. So Moses always sought the Lord, sought to find out about, about him as a person, sought to know, to understand him, and how to obey him, how to, to perform his will. And then the scripture tells us that the righteous walk in the ways of the Lord, yeah, inevitably, naturally, because it is endemic in them to perform the will of God. They don't have any difficulties. But transgressors stumble in them. Why transgressors stumble in the ways of the Lord? Because they are not equipped as the righteous are in obeying the, 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 the law of God. So the law of God is not written for the righteous. It's written for sinners. So the righteous person does not stumble in the ways of the Lord, naturally obeys it. 
But how do you know the ways of the Lord? The question is, who is wise? Who is prudent? So with wisdom and prudence, we understand the ways of the Lord. You see that it is not a trap. The Lord is not trapping you. He's not placing this trial in, in, your, in your path to make you fall. The Lord God does not tempt us into sin. No, does not. He tests us. The testing of the Lord is to reveal what He has done in us. Is to give us the, the, the material evidence of what He has made us into. You are a conqueror. You need the evidence that you are a conqueror. You are an overcomer. You need the evidence. He's giving you the title because of what Christ has accomplished. But you are equipped with the mandate to manifest that attribute. The only way to do it is if there is something to conquer. Or there is something to overcome. So one of his ways is to give you access to challenges so that you overcome them. So that you conquer them. Because you are a conqueror. We've been taught as God's people that we must pray for every negative situation in our life because, you know, we are children of God must live happily. We must live, you know, we shouldn't, we, you know, we shouldn't really shed tears. We should be joyous, you know, because we have joy unspeakable. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ had joy unspeakable. There were times when he cried. The joy didn't depart from him. So now every situation that we encounter in life is meant to be prayed against because it is one of the ways of the Lord that He leads us in the path that He has chosen for us. You know, David refer, refer, uh, remarks this in the psalm. He says, Who is that man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he chooses. Many ways. The Lord may... See, you may seem that he's denying you something that you've been asking, waiting for a long time, but he's not denying, denying you. He's teaching you in one of his ways to be patient. Because every child of God, every righteous, ought to be patient. So one of his ways is to teach us patience. So he said, run the race before you, the race said before you, with patience. But you will get there. That's the key point. Whatever the Lord has given you to do, whatever promises you hold from him, you will see the manifestation of. You will get there. You'll be successful. That is guaranteed. That's not going to change. But the process to arriving there is what the Lord is much more interested in. Because what sort of person are you going to be when you reach there? How would you act and behave? The Lord has to make sure that you are the right, the right frame of mind, the right understanding to appreciate what He has given you. This is why He took Israel a long route from Egypt the promised land. There was a shortcut. The Lord deliberately took them the wrong for the wrong route. That they had to be there to face the Red Sea. Forty years it took them. But the generation that left Egypt was not the one that entered the promised land, except for two individuals: Joshua, the servant of God, and Caleb. Only those two from the old generation stepped onto the promised land. Everyone else died along the way. Not because the Lord had not guaranteed their success, but they did not understand His way. So they moaned and complained and moaned and complained. They finished mourning and they went to complain. They finished complaining and they went to mourning. They moaned when they didn't have meat to eat. They moaned when they had meat to eat. They moaned when they didn't have water. They moaned when they had meat. They wanted to go back to Egypt because of cucumber. When the Lord had promised them to own lands and to own farms, they were remembering cucumbers. 
to consume cucumbers as slaves. But let's say to them, actually, you are a landowner because you are part of my plan. You are my chosen. I want you to own the land that produces cucumbers, not to be a slave and to depend on some pharaoh to give you a few slices. And that's how the Lord works. It is his grand and master plan that he considers. It is his will that he considers, his purposes that he considers, his counsel he considers. Not what we think or what we feel. That's why when we align ourselves as children of God, who are led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, who should not find his ways difficult. Because the righteous naturally should walk in the ways of the Lord. Naturally. Without difficulty. It is difficult to transgress us because they can't obey the will of God, obey the word of God. It is not in them to obey because they are not changed, they are not, they, they, they are not transformed, they are not conformed according to the will of God. They are not changed. Their mind is still carnal. That's why it will be difficult for a transgressor to walk in the way of the Lord. And what will happen is they will stumble because they will be breaking God's law every time. So those that stumbled in the wilderness, the Lord said, He swore that they will not enter His rest, and they didn't. We don't want to be in that position, not to enter His rest. Not entering the rest in our time because the Lord Jesus Christ has come already. It means Hades. There's no, other, there's no middle ground. So we need to stay true in what we have accepted and believed to follow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Read another scripture. I have to place more emphasis on this. In the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58 or 55 rather. Yeah, it's actually 50 yards. So I'll go back to 50 yards. Okay. Okay. So I'll just quickly. Um, uh, one verse. Oh, from verse 1. Yeah, if you find it, you can start from verse 1 okay. and see what the Lord wants us to start. Okay. From, from verse 1 of chapter 58 of Isaiah. Cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of, God, of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God why have we feasted, fasted, they say, and you have not sinned? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the days of your fast, you found pleasure and exploit all your neighbors, all laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate. And to strive and to strike with the feast of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it 
to bow down his head like blush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the lord is this not the fast that i have chosen to choose to lose the bond of wickedness to undo the heavy burden to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor and to cast <coughs> who are cast out when you see the naked that you covered him and not hide yourself from them your own flesh then your light shall break forth like the morning your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you the glory of the lord shall be your rare guide then you shall call on the name you can shall call on the lord will answer you shall cry and he will say yeah i am if you take away the yoke from your midst the point of the finger and speaking wickedness if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then your light shall dawn in darkness and your darkness shall be as the new day the lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your voice you shall be like the water a watered garden and like a spring of water whose water do not fail those from among you shall build the old taste waste places continue from there from 11 the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail those from among you shall build the old waste places you shall raise up the foundations of many generations and shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to dwell in if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight the holy day of the Lord honorable and shall honor him not doing your own ways nor finding your own pleasure nor speaking your own words then you shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father the mouth of the Lord has spoken so the emphasis on in this scripture is to to show how to apply the ways of the lord see in this scripture we see a few ways of the lord okay mm -hmm. there is fasting yeah mm -hmm. which most people are advised to do mm -hmm. and the lord instituted this is my way okay but what is more important to the lord is not the activity is understanding why he gave the activity they were fasting and yet on one hand denying people their right uh, for wages maltreating them so the Lord is saying you can't apply an activity that I have prescribed out of my will and at the same time go against, against my will by dealing out you know treacherously dealing treacherously with your laborers with your brethren people have been told to sow a seed give the lord will give you back but the lord did not say that so you cannot use god's word against him you can't pin him in a corner you say, I've done this because you requested this, so therefore you must honor you know, my, my effort and deliver accordingly. And he says that you are seeking to, 
to know my ways. But my ways are not based on activities. They're based on my word. So it tells them from chapter 13, so if you turn away from you turn away your foot from the Sabbath because this was under the old covenant, they have to respect the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was made for the person, for the individual to rest. The law wanted them to have the rest. So you have to make it into a law for them to obey it for their benefit. The Lord just tells us this. The Sabbath was made for the man, not the man for the Sabbath. Yeah, from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable. Yeah? And shall honor him not doing your own ways. Yeah? So he said, when you take my, the activities, you apply them without understanding the principle behind. It's the same as doing your own thing. You want something from the Lord, so you go on a fast without understanding what the Lord is doing in your life. And he said, not finding your own pleasure. We are created for his pleasure. Our role, our function in the kingdom is to please the Lord God. Because it's for his pleasure that he created us. So we don't seek our own pleasure, but seek to please him. No speaking your own words, but his word that we must speak, not our own words. So the fact that you are doing the activity, you're going through the emotions, is immaterial before the Lord. If you do not walk in the ways, as the righteous must walk in the ways, in his ways, or in the ways of the Lord, and do his pleasure, and speak his words. The activities won't matter. But this is what the outcome will be. When we walk in his ways. So then in 14 of chapter 58 of Isaiah. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. Yeah? And it says I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. This is what everybody is seeking for in the pagan world. They all want to be on top of the world, so to speak. But the Lord says, you walk in my ways, you seek to please me, you speak my words. I, the Lord, he says, I'll cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. I'll place you there because you are following my ways. And doesn't stop there. He said, feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. This applies to you in the new covenant because you are a descendant of Abraham, a seed of Abraham through Christ Jesus. The blessing of the Lord that he placed on Jacob with the same blessing that transferred to Isaac, the same blessing that transferred to Jacob. We're talking about the blessing of Abraham. They are the blessing of the Lord. Abraham didn't manufacture them. They were given to him and to his descendants. One of whom you are. Mm -hmm. And he concludes with an affirmative, mm -hmm. definite sanction. Mm -hmm. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. That means it is established. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord does not open his mouth for just the sake of it. Mm -hmm. When he opens his mouth and speaks a word, that word goes forth to accomplish the purpose for which it was sent and comes up with the report to say it is done. So when the mouth of the Lord has spoken, it is done. The Lord will not go back on his word. He is not uncertain, doesn't entertain uncertainty. He is definite. One more scripture. In Isaiah chapter 28, we'll start from verse 13 to the end. So then the word of the Lord 
them to them to become, do this, do that, a role for this, a role for that, and no here and no there, so that if the things will be done here, they will be injured and snared and captured. Therefore, may the world of the Lord, who stop us to rule this people in Jerusalem, who boast, we have entered into a covenant with death, with the realm of the dead who have no end of me, when I overwhelm the Scourge. Scourge, sweet spy, they cannot touch us, for we have made our lives our refuge and falsehood our hiding place. Mm -hmm. Those who speak to soften and make them. See, I lay a stone in Zion and set the stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure salvation, the one who relies on it will never be stricken from it. I will make justice the natural man and righteousness the common man. Hair, Hail will sweep away your refuge, the lie, and the wolf will overthrow your hiding place. The covenant is dead of the enemy. Mm. The agreement with the realm of the dead will not <laughs> When the overwhelming scourge sweeps by, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it comes, it will carry you away. Morning after morning, by day and by night, it will sweep through. The understanding of this message will bring to terror. The blood is too short to strip out of, the blanket too narrow to wrap around you. The Lord will rise up as he did at Mount Perazim. He will rose himself and stand before you of Gideon, the Hebrew said, His strange work had a foggy task to aim in on. Now stop your mocking, for your jubilee become heavier. The Lord, the Lord Almighty has torn you into destruction and creation for some man. Listen and hear my voice, pay attention and hear what I say. When a farmer plows for planting, they put out the same rain. Does he keep on digging up the wealth in the soil? When he has nothing to sow with, does he not sow a pile away and the sick of coming? Does he plant weeds in his place, burning in his field and felt in his field? His God instructs him to teach it and teaches him the right way. Haraway is not fresh as a sledge, nor is the wheel of car wood brought over from it. Haraway is beaten out of the world and coming with spirit. Grain was being ground to make bread, so when it is not good and fresh and well, the wheels of the threshing cart may be left loosely, and one to whom he is forced to die. Um, grain. All this also comes from the man Almighty, whose plan is not the plan, whose wisdom is not the same. Amen. Right. So I'll, I'll read the New King James Version from verse 23 of chapter 23 of Isaiah. Give ear and hear my voice, listen and hear my speech. Does the plowman keep plowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods when he has leveled, it, level, leveled its surface? Does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin? Plant the wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place, and the spelt in its place. For he instructs him in right judgment. His God teaches him. His God teaches him. <coughs> pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. For the black cumin is not threshed with a threshing sledge, nor is a cartwheel rolled over the cumin. But the black cumin is beaten out with a stick and the cumin with the rod. Bread flour must be ground, therefore he does not fresh it forever, break it with its cartwheel or crush it with its horseman. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Now, what the Lord is trying to say to the children of Israel here is that he has, he possesses all the knowledge and the wisdom that life runs on. So when he's asking them to obey his, way, his words, to obey his will, to work in his ways, it's not because he's trying to stifle their progress in life. So he's giving them an illustration here. So that I know what goes on in terms of food production and agriculture and the need for you to, to grow things, to have food available. 
I'm the one who gives that wisdom to you. So he's saying here, this is what the power man does. How does he know how to do that? Because I gave him the wisdom. How does he know to distinguish how to treat the seeds, the different types of seeds? The one that he uses a stick to beat on, the one that he uses a cart with, because I gave him that knowledge. So he emphasizes that twice. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. So when the Lord places you to walk in his ways, he knows what to do with you. God knows everything there is to know. And more besides. The Lord God that told you about a smartphone in 1200. He that told you about the internet a thousand years before that. He that told you about the use of a computer. In 1940, the, the, the modern computer we have now, he told you about them. All the inventions that have happened before, he that told you about them before even the people that came up with the idea were born. So there is nothing that the Lord God does not know. So when he has, when he's instructing us, he's leading us in the path that he set before us, he's not trying to make our life unnecessary and uncomfortable or trying to stifle our progress or our success. It's not against us. God is for us. Yeah. The Lord is wonderful in counsel. Excellent in guidance. Excellent in guidance. So there's no one above him when it comes to giving you guidance. Wonderful in counsel. Wonderful counselor. So we bypass the Holy Spirit on so many matters and we wonder why we keep coming back with prayer, more prayer requests. That's the result. When you bypass Him, you're going to come back with a prayer request because you want your own way, you know, declare your own words, did sought your own pleasure, so you backfired and you come back to Him. There's no need to do that. We need, to just, we need to stop with God. Stay in the ways that He has prescribed us. Line upon line, precept upon precept. And in the doctrine of Christ, that is the, the encapsulation of the truth that one must use to direct their lives there, there with. Yeah. Yeah. So it is the ways of the Lord that are past finding that we must find. They are past finding because we don't understand them. Not because they are unreachable. Christ Jesus is the why. All the ways of the Lord, all the, 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 the things that we need, the substance that we require to, to make judgments, to, to, to compare things, to differentiate, are all found in the Word of God. And Christ Jesus our Lord is the Word of God. So, you want to go into business, you want to go into education, you want to go into employment, any area of life, by staying in the ways of the Lord, you will get there. Because it says that He is wonderful in counsel and He is excellent in guidance. So, He will guide you and give you the best advice. So, you don't need to be seeking advice from or information from others. If you need to go to those people, let the Holy Spirit guide you there. The problem that we have in our generation is we don't know how to wait. Sometimes we wait too long or we're too quick getting up and going because we feel that we're waiting long, we've been waiting long enough. Okay? We're always getting the balance wrong. But those that know they are God, so you need to know the Lord. How do you know the Lord? It's by staying in His ways. Because when He teaches His ways, then you understand how He works. Then it's difficult for you to stumble or get things wrong. Because once He's given you counsel, 
He's giving you guidance. There's no why possible for you to fail. It's literally impossible. So the question is, who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. So we need to develop wisdom by making the effort to want to know, to want to understand. And we have the Holy Spirit to help us with that. Many men of old did not have the opportunity. Even Daniel, a man greatly loved, he prayed, the answer had to come. The Lord had sent the first time, that, that, because he saw some incredible stuff that he was trying to work out how, and he had the gift of prophecy, and he understood the, 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 uh, the interpretation of, of visions and dreams, and even tongues. But when he was given some heavy stuff, he didn't know what to do with them. He didn't know how to interpret them. He needed help. He did not have the Holy Spirit abiding in him, so he could not understand what he was, what he was saying. The Lord had to send Gabriel twice to explain to him. But the vision of the end time, the Lord sent the spirit of understanding, one of the seven spirits of God, to come to him. The spirit of understanding that was that had to struggle uh, uh, with the, 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 the king of Persia, that uh, the archangel Michael had to come and uh, support him in that battle for him. To, so it took him 21 days. So he tells Daniel, the, the first time you prayed, your prayer had been answered. I was on my way. But I had to fight uh, these demonic forces that occupied the air in Persia. Mm -hmm. So they, they kept him there for 20 years. Uh, uh, Michael, Archangel Michael came to, to support me there in battle. So I, I was able to, 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 to get down here. But on my way back, I'm going to be fighting with them again. But we have the Holy Spirit with us now. So when we pray, when we present a request, it doesn't take, have to take 21 days. Yes, the Bible tells us the Lord sent the, 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 the seven spirits of God into the earth to help us, to give us ideas. The spirit of counsel is the spirit, one of the seven spirits. The spirit of wisdom is one of the seven spirits. The spirit of fear, fearful reference. The spirit of understanding. So he sent them all to tell us, to give us ideas. When the Lord tells us that in the last days the knowledge of man will grow, will increase. How is he going to increase? Is the Lord helping us for, to, to, for that knowledge to increase? It's no bad thing. To precipitate is, 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 is coming. Mm -hmm. But remaining in his ways is what a righteous must naturally, effortlessly, inevitably do. Because a righteous just gets things right from the get-go. The law is not written for the righteous because the righteous has obeyed the law. That's why it's declared righteous. It's about board. The transgressor will stumble because the transgressor has not been changed is carnal, does not understand the ways of the Lord. So he will stumble in the ways of the Lord. You must not stumble in the way of the Lord. Do not work, walk out of his will. This, this is what the Lord had issues with Israel. Because they kept wandering away every single occasion they got. They wandered away. So he sent them into captivity to, to bring back their senses. And it always he always had difficulty with them. Let's not put ourselves in that situation where the Holy Spirit is struggling to get our attention. We we'll keep postponing every time. He tells you to pray. Oh, yeah, I'll do it in the next five minutes. And then there goes, oh, gosh, should I pray? I didn't. And, you know, it tells you to read the scripture. That you, 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 you know. He's having difficulty to get your attention. How will he teach you his wife? You are a righteous. You must find it easy to walk in his ways. Because his commandments are not burdens. I mean, his yoke are easy. His yoke is easy, he says. 
Say, come to me, O ye that labor and have heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do not run away from the Lord God. He's your God. Don't be afraid of him. He's not your enemy. And most importantly, do not make yourself an enemy of God. You won't last. He tells us how he deals with his enemies. <laughs> it's frightening. Really frightening. So stay in the ways of the Lord. Stay where he has placed you. Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for prudence. Ask him for the equipping that you need to remain faithful to what he has called you to do. Solomon asked, Lord, give me wisdom. You've given me such a use of responsibility. I don't even know how to go in and come out. I mean, I'm a child myself. Mm -hmm. Where do I start? How do I organize this kingdom? Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord wants to hear from us. He wants us to express that dependence on Him. So that He can equip us to become independent in performing His will. Without needing Him to come to be reminding us all the time. Or to use His firm hand. then it is easy to perform his will and to progress. The journey of Israel to the promised land was meant to last 40 days. Not 40 years, 40 days. But they prolonged it because they did not understand his ways. Do not prolong God's promise in your life by coming out of his plan every now and then. Because it's tedious. Really tedious. Had Israel remained true to God's promises, to the word that was spoken to them, every single one of them that left Egypt, none of them would have died in the wilderness. Not a single soul. They would have all stepped on the promised land because that's what the Lord had promised. Those that were meant to, to die, to hold the testimony of the word of God, died in Egypt. They were all martyrs because it took 400 years plus. So many generations died in Egypt that did not see the promised land, but they had that promise that the Lord was going to deliver them. And when Joseph died, he prophesied about the, 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 the end to the slavery of the people of Israel and he instructed that his bones should be carried when they are leaving. They carried his bones to the promised land, which is the third person who entered the promised land. From that gen from, by, it was from the early generation at least, he got to, his bones got to enter. That's how, he, that's how far he believed. And this is what the Bible tells us as well, that are those that believed, not seeing the promise, meaning not being, uh, uh, they saw the promise, but it was not for them to enter that promise. But they still held the testimony because they knew that was going to happen. And the promise happening, it confirmed their ministry. All the prophets that went before, our advent confirms their ministry. It solidifies their standing. Because everything that the Lord had told them to prophesy about has happened. Therefore, they received the reward. They received the, 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 the accreditation needed that their prophecies that were, were true. That's what the Bible tells us that without us, they were not, their, the ministry will be, will be, will be incomplete. Right? So the words of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them. Transgressors stumble in them because transgressors cannot obey they are carnal they don't have the spirit of god in them they're not converted they're not changed they're not born again but one that is righteous is born again transformed saved sanctified purified you know cleansed knows god personally that one must not stumble in the ways of the lord must easily walk in the way of the lord I can understand the challenges, the trials, understand the times and the seasons, produce the fruit when it is time to produce the fruit. 
remain healthy. Leaves, no join. Roots, you know, profoundly, you know, connected to the source of life, found in living water. That's the call that we have in the kingdom of God as righteous. The righteous have come to walk in the ways that the Lord has prescribed for us. So who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So stay blessed, brethren, and uh, have a wonderful week, even as the Lord has already declared it to be so for you. So we shall see you again. Amen. 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 Amen.